Gospel for Unreached, our mission is to spread the good news to the whole world through the internet. Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into the whole world and preach the good news to all creation. Mark 16, 15. Come, let us join our hands and hearts to reach the lost and tell them the love of Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples to all nations. Surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the unchanging commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are the last days of harvest, and we do not know when our Lord will return. Life-changing sermons in several languages, CD, DVD, MP3, and Bible tracts are available free of cost, and if you would like to learn more and get involved with our ministry or sponsor a missionary or orphan, please feel free to contact us by email at gospelunreached at yahoo.com or call us at 310-408-2823. Your comments and suggestions are very valuable to our ministry. We enjoy hearing from our visitors. Thanks for visiting. Please come back and visit again soon. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you. casualties were so heavy, the allow caused by the Democrats for immediate ceasefire, withdrawal of the troops and compromise with the enemy. Now it wasn't until near the end of the summer when Generals Ulysses S. Grant and William Tecumseh Sherman were starting to win some battles, was President Abraham Lincoln able to go on and win the re-election of 1864. Those Northern Democrats who are calling loudly for immediate ceasefire were known as the Copperheads. Their main argument against President Lincoln was this. They said, why should we die for the N-word and the abolitionists? You see, to them it didn't, make any, it didn't make any economic sense. But what would have happened to these United States if President Lincoln listened to them and stopped the war prematurely? There would have been two United States, one with slavery and the other without. Perhaps the women's suffrage movement of the early 20th century may never have taken place. That one decision would have changed the United Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain went to Munich. And he had conference with Adolf Hitler. When he came back to London, he was received with great accolades for having achieved peace in our times. In fact, he was waving a little piece of paper with Hitler's signature on it saying, Peace! Peace! But this is what Churchill said at the time. He said, this is a great disaster. Unless there's a revival of morals and courage in our nation, it will be a great catastrophe. And soon after that, the world was plunged into the midst of World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, what about our own times? We live in a time where the two highest executive uh, leaders, political leaders in our country are saying that perhaps men should be marrying men, and maybe women with women. But put on your thinking cap with me, just think with me just for a moment. Ask yourself sex with another man, or women designed to have sex with another woman. 
But let's say they were born that way, that their brain forces their body to do with it what their body's not designed to do. Isn't that like a physical counterpart to schizophrenia? Is this civil rights that we should celebrate, or is this something that we should treat with compassion? In other words, I'm asking you, is this a civil rights issue, or is this a common sense issue? But you see, we come to a point where, because we have turned our backs upon God, not only is God's protection is being lifted from our nation, but the difference between the left or the right, or the north or the south. It's high time for us to repent and come back to God. So God's hand of protection come back upon us and that we can, we can enjoy some peace. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God has not just given us the Ten Commandments for our protection. The Bible says that it is appointed unto a man once to die, and then comes a judgment. So just go through the four of the Ten Commandments to see how we would do on a day of judgment, if you're truly honest with ourselves. The first commandment says, you shall have no other God before me. In other words, if you put anything between you and God, it's called idolatry. The sixth commandment says, you shall not commit murder. Now the Bible standard for murder is, if you're to hate your brother, you've already committed murder in your heart. The seventh commandment, do not commit adultery. Now if I were to look at a woman and lust after her, I've already committed adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus said. The ninth commandment, do not bear false witness. And you know what that means. Now here's the kicker. In James chapter 2 verse 10, it says, if you keep all the laws of God, you just break one of them, it says you've broken them all. And this is the reason why the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In fact, one sin is enough to get us to hell for eternity. And because we couldn't save ourselves either by good works or religion, God had to send the Savior. And His name is Jesus Christ. Yes, God became a man. He lived a perfect life. Then He willingly laid down His life and went to the cross to pay for your sins and my sins. And Jesus died upon that cross, rose again from the dead on the third day, proving that He is God and proving that He has paid for your sins and my sins. For if there were just one sin that Jesus didn't pay for, He couldn't have risen from the dead. For God is a perfect and holy God. He will not overlook even that one sin. Yes, Jesus paid for them all. Therefore, you and I can have hope. And you know what else it proves? It proves that God loves you and me very, very much. How much? Just look at Jesus' arms. His arms are open wide. In fact, the Bible says in John chapter 17, The Father loves you. Yes, you, sir. You, ma'am. The Father loves you as much as the Son. In fact, the Father God loves you as much as Jesus Christ, God, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, who created the heavens and the earth. Yes, and He died for you. He went to the cross to pay for all your sins and wipe you clean as if you've never seen as white as snow. That's what His blood did for you and me. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what are you waiting for? Cry out to God and say, Lord God, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you. I'm running to you. I know I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Give me. He will come in. And you know what? He'll not only give you eternal life, but give you the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the wisdom and the strength to live here and now. And you know what else? If you do that from the bottom of your heart, and if you pray that in Jesus' name, this is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 10. If you would confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with a heart one believes, resulting in righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made, resulting in salvation. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever trusts in Him shall not be disappointed. In other words, humble yourself, turn from your sins, ask Jesus to save you, and tell somebody else about it, and He will save you, because He loves you. And Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. Do that today, ladies and gentlemen. And read the Bible. Do what it says by the power of the Holy Spirit, for none of us can live it by our own strength, only by God's power that you and I can live. Yes, and may God bless you all today. Amen. You know, I, I, I'm, I just want to add one more thing, ladies and gentlemen. We, no one knows when Jesus Christ is going to come back. The Bible makes it clear that no one knows the day or the hour when Jesus is coming back. But you know what? We're living in the very end of the last days. We are right in that season. And you know, and one day, I don't know the, when that day is, but Jesus will appear in heaven. And he'll, he'll, he'll hear a trumpet call. And those who know Jesus will be taken like that. And then the earth, 
the world will go through seven years of tribulation. And that time, ladies and gentlemen, there will be no restraint whatsoever. Right now, the Holy Spirit is restraining the evil one. And therefore, he couldn't do anything he wants. But at that time, Holy Spirit's hand of restraint would be removed. And the devil would have his free run for the, on earth for seven years. And when that happens, ladies and gentlemen, it will literally be hell on earth. And before that happens, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to be a saved right now because it's easy right now. But if you wait till then, ladies and gentlemen, they'll force you to receive a mark on your right hand or the forehead, some sort of a computer chip. Without that, you will not be able to buy or sell anything in place like this. In other words, if you don't receive the mark, you're going to die. But if you do receive a mark, this is what the Bible says. You are condemned for eternity. You'll be sent to the lake of fire. And lake of fire is a lot worse than hell itself. So you're between the rock and the hard place. But let's say, just for the sake of argument, that you don't believe me right now, and you just go on your way and the rapture happens, and the people are gone. And you, and then you then you realize, oh man, that guy, that crazy guy was talking about Jesus coming back. What he said is true. Now, they'll force you to receive a mark, but don't receive it. Even if you had to die, you get your head chopped off, and a lot worse things would happen to you. But you know what? Still, that's better than going to eternal destruction. Trust in Jesus Christ right now, ladies and gentlemen. Don't wait till that time. Come to Him. His arms are open wide. Thank you very much for listening. May God bless you all today. And as I said, read the Bible. Do what it says by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't even have to be a genius or even believe in Jesus to know that our world is in a very dangerous place right now. It's tottering. The entire European economy is tottering. And we're not that far behind. You know, they say that the uh, U.S. federal debt is $15 trillion, but that's just federal debt. Do you know what the, uh, how much the Social Security Trust Fund owes? It's not, there's no money in it. It owes $107 trillion, ladies and gentlemen. That's seven times the size of the national debt. There's a $107 trillion IOU in the so-called Social Security Trust Fund. You and I know it's not sustainable. Once the European economy tanks, we're next. And you know what? Then we're going to be scavenging in the street, perhaps going through that trash can over there looking for food. That's what's going to happen. It's not that far down the corner. And not only that, there will be a huge earthquake. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. One that's bigger than what hit Japan. And according to, according to, according to, well, Torah is the Bible, by the way. It's the Old Testament. Uh, but anyway, according to John Paul Jackson, a, a, a trustworthy, this man is a, a prophet of God, but his, his uh, prophecies did come true and he's pretty trustworthy, I believe. And according to him, a big tsunami came across here, I'm talking right here. It covered a building about seven stories high. That's how deep and a high a tsunami is coming. In order for that to happen, you're going to have a, an earthquake about size 10 on a Richter scale. And that's coming too, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to save your life. Come to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what happened in Japan. And no one thought 9.0 is going to hit. But it did. And now, right now, because of radiation poisoning, it's a wasteland in northern Japan. And did you know the cesium... Uh, I forget exactly what the uh, isotope number is, 137 or whatever. That's found in tuna caught right off California. And that's only about a year later. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming. It's coming. So come to Jesus today. May God bless you all today. Today is a day of salvation.